A lot of us would like to use our bikes more for things like shopping, going to work, exploring our cities. But that would mean using streets with lots of traffic, and a lot of us are afraid of that. We can't see ourselves driving our bikes in traffic. That's exactly what this video is about, how to drive your bike in traffic without being scared of it. I hope you've already read something about vehicular cycling or seen the video Effective Cycling distributed by the League of American Bicyclists. At the end of this video will be information about finding those resources. It's best to be familiar with vehicular cycling principles before heading out onto the roadway. I want to show you how driving your bike in traffic looks, how the traffic responds to a bicycle on the roadway, and how it really is just like driving that you already do in your car. All of the traffic scenes you will see here were filmed in regular weekday traffic in Long Beach, California. None of the scenes were set up or made up. None of the drivers of cars, trucks, buses were aware that we were filming. The way you see them react to the presence of a bicycle was natural. The way the vast majority of drivers react. In scene after scene, you will see that the bicycle can be driven safely in traffic. As you begin to try these maneuvers yourself, I want you to only drive where you feel comfortable. A little anxiousness is okay, but being scared is a warning that you're way beyond your capabilities. Work up to more complex traffic situations as you feel ready to try it. Review with yourself what worked well and what to do differently next time. Read about vehicular cycling and think about when you see another cyclist on the road. Are they driving according to the laws of traffic or are they unsafe, unpredictable? Before we venture out onto the highway, I want to remind you of a few things that will make your driving more predictable, safer, and faster. First, I always wear a helmet. They do save lives, and they reduce injuries as well. And on my helmet, I have a rear view mirror, so I can keep track of the traffic behind me. You can get these to go on eyeglasses as well. Hey, you know, you have a mirror in your car. Why not on your bike? Third, I want to show you how to scan behind you. It helps you to be sure about the situation behind, and it shows other drivers that you are intending to make a change of position on the roadway or make a turn. Practice this in a parking lot or empty street until you can scan and keep going in a straight line. Lastly, I think we should review hand signals and other ways to communicate your intentions to other drivers. Right turn. I feel this arm signal for right turn is most intuitive. You can also use this one the signal that car drivers sometimes use. Left turn. For left turn, put your left arm straight out. Stopping or slowing. Put your arm down with palm open. Waving and shaking can bring attention quicker. It's a good idea to use eye contact to confirm that another driver sees you when you want to change lanes or merge. At stop signs, drivers often confuse who has the right of way. You can get things unfrozen by wagging your head and mouthing the word go. And when a driver yields to you or in another way makes your life easier, mouth thank you and smile. Even when I'm cut off or honked at, I never respond with insults. That makes it harder for the next bicyclist that comes their way. Okay, I think we're ready. So why don't we take our bike out onto the roadway and try driving and see what it's like from a cyclist's eye view. It's clear, come on, let's go. Cyclists new to traffic often try staying away from cars so much that they actually put themselves in danger. They swerve in and out of parked cars and aren't seen early enough by other drivers. They ride too close to car doors that might open unexpectedly. They won't control the lane they're in and cars cut them off at turns. Lane control is important when you need to change lanes. You need to hold on to control through intersections. So let's start with getting comfortable with riding on roads with lanes too narrow to share. On this street there's no safe way to share the lane. You need to be aware of other vehicles all around you. This is very important. Using a mirror or scanning helps you keep track of the situation behind. The traffic behind or following drivers may not be able to see brake lights of those ahead of you, so use your hand signals. Holding your place in line at a signal prevents cars from squeezing around you. Watch for pedestrians in crosswalks or near parked vehicles that hide them. 
It's against the law to fail to stop at a crosswalk when other vehicles are already stopped. You may have hit that person. Be ready to start from stops promptly. Don't make others wait behind you unreasonably. Don't tailgate. You can't miss the potholes or the oil slicks. When you're going to turn, mirror to the rear or scan, signal and position yourself correctly. Be predictable. Make eye contact with drivers approaching you. Make sure they see you. Look at the way traffic behind me can get to the left or right to turn. Notice how calm and orderly traffic flows behind me. There's no evidence of impatience or confusion. The drivers know there's no room for me to move over, and I'm not holding them up. If you can't keep up with traffic, pull over when it's safe and let faster drivers surge ahead. When leaving the narrow lane, scan and wave thank you to following drivers for their patience and understanding. Now that we can control the lane, let's try a simple signalized intersection.